I love Hebrews chapter 11, these amazing stories of men and women of amazing faith who accomplished phenomenal things. Of course, we, we tend to think, well, out of my league, uh, they're exceptional people. Actually, the, the whole thing is that they're not exceptional people. They're actually very ordinary people. And we know that Abraham's there, Moses is there and so on. And then at the end it says, time would fail me if I were to also mention, and it gives a list, uh, among the list is Gideon. So Gideon finds his way into Hebrews 11, the heroes of faith. You say, well, Gideon, he's such a weak guy. But then it says, actually, in Hebrews 11, that weak people were made strong and became mighty in battle and put foreign armies to flight. That's exactly what Gideon did. This guy who was so weak became mighty. And, and beloved, this is what Hebrews is, uh, 11 is all about. It's about very ordinary people. Abraham was too old. Sarah was barren. It's kind of impossible. It's kind of out of our league. And really that's what the whole chapter is about is saying the faith isn't for exceptional people. Faith is for weak people. I know for myself, you know, some of us have weak faith, yeah, or even has been damaged. As a young believer, I was once in my friend's home and they had a little baby girl who was born terribly sick. And one day I was there with my friend and his wife brought in the baby to the room we were in. And the baby looked so sick, so ill. And uh, she said, oh, please pray for Christina. And we laid hands on Christina. And amazingly, when we opened our eyes again, her colour had changed. I remember going home to my parents who were not yet Christian and saying, uh, Christina's just been healed. We laid hands on her. And a few days later, she passed away. I was absolutely crushed. And I said to my friend, the parent of this beautiful little girl, I said, I'll never trust God again. And a year later, God spoke to me, called me to put down my job, to live by faith, to do door-to-door -door evangelism. And my friend said to me, do you remember a year ago, you said to me, I'll never trust God again. He said, do you realize you're now trusting God for everything, for everything? And I was, I think I, I am trusting God for everything. I've got no employment anymore. No one's employing me. Uh, he's got to provide. And, and I'd come uh, from great weakness to really trusting God, putting my confidence in him. And beloved, we don't have to be special people. Gideon was such a weak guy and I'm, I'm amazed at God's patience with him. You remember he said, look, just let the fleece be filled with water and the ground be dry and then I'll believe. I didn't. I wrote in the margin of my Bible, my Bible, no you won't. He didn't. Then he reversed it. He said, let the ground be damp and the fleece be dry and he still didn't believe. The guy was very weak but he came to faith. That's the wonderful thing. He came to faith. And God so graciously arranges for him to be there in Hebrews 11. Sarah, who struggled with faith, she's in Hebrews 11. Moses, who was struggling, he's in Hebrews 11. These people were very ordinary people like you and me, who found, no, I will trust God. I will believe what he says. I will make this step. You see, God doesn't despise weakness but he can't bless unbelief. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So in our weakness, let's say, Lord, I'm gonna trust you. So I'm just gonna trust you. And, and this is how the whole Christian life begins to open up. And we find we can start doing exploits, amazing things. Gideon put an army to flight. We'll look at that later, but let's see there's a progress from being weak. God chose a weak man made him strong through faith he put foreign armies to flight who can tell what you could do if you just start believing god 
and put behind you the damaged faith maybe hurts and wounds from the past let's believe him he can take us out of our unbelief into confidence and into fruitfulness god bless you my dear friends